Hey guys, Nexi here. It passed more than a year since I reviewed Delta Style 3D Printer. Last time that was Anycubic Cosel Linear Plus, which was fantastic Delta 3D Printer with affordable price. Now one year later, Anycubic released their new, much bigger Delta, and here it is. This is the Anycubic Predator and it's huge. Stay tuned. The size of this delta is massive. It's over 1 meter tall and half meter wide. It comes in 25 kg shipping box that is almost big as my entire desk. So if you consider getting this printer, make sure that you have enough space for it. Speaking of size, this delta has a huge build volume of 370 mm in diameter and 455 mm on the z-axis. So it's definitely capable of printing some huge objects. In terms of specs and features, it has auto leveling, filament runout switch, resume from power loss, touchscreen, 32-bit motherboard, 1000 watt power supply, 24 volt heated bed, and ultra base pro printing glass surface. It has the Bowden style setup with a Titan clone extruder and comes with a V6 clone hot end with a two filament cooling fans. Effector arms that connect carriages and print head are made of carbon fiber. It has adjustable belt tighters and the optical stop sensor for each carriage. Carriages are made of metal and they roll on V-slot bearing wheels, which are inside of these custom made V-slot aluminum extrusions. Build quality of this Delta is a very good and the whole frame feels strong and stable. Most of the frame are made of aluminum extrusion with a combination of metal sheets and one acrylic sheet on the top. On the front top side of the frame there is a touch LCD screen which is bright, sharp and responsive. Software interface is a simple, it's very easy to navigate and it's pretty much the same as it was on Anycubic i3 Mega and on the Chiron so I will not go in so much of detail here. On the right top side of the frame there is a place for SD card and USB socket and on the left top side of the frame there is an AC plug, safety fuse and on-off switch. Beside printer in a box you will get a whole bunch of things like 1 kg of the PLA filament, spatula, tools, tweezers, cutters, spool holder, SD card with a USB reader, nozzle cleaner wire, auto level magnetic probe, gloves, power cord, USB cable and you will also get complete replacement of the hot end with a thermistor, nozzle, heater and PTF tube. And lastly there is a color printed user manual which is very nice, easy to follow and detailed. Now in terms of assembling this Delta was very easy to put together as this machine mostly comes pre-assembled. You just need to screw down main pillars to the bottom and the upper frame and then attach print head to one side of the factor arms using the supply screws. Next, I secure extruder to the carriages or pulley sliders using the supply springs and three screws. Next up is the wiring. Just connect each of these wires from the motherboard to the print head simply by plugging these connectors to the corresponding one, which is easy as they are all nicely labeled. Next, I install the filament runout switch holding with the two screws. After that, plug heatbed cable to the connector on the top of the frame and then hide that cable inside the extrusion and cover it with a plastic cover. Next, install the spool holder, remove plastic cover from the acrylic sheet and from the ultra base. Last step, I turn on the printer and that's pretty much it. For the whole unboxing and assembly, you need around 45 minutes. Now before we start to printing on a 3D printer, we need to level it and the leveling procedure on this delta is a very simple. First you need to attach the magnetic micro probe switch to the print head and then click on level. Printer will then take measurements on 37 different places over entire glass plate and save the values in a memory. After that remove magnetic probe and click on the level test. Printer will then start to print around 4mm away from the glass plate and now you just click on the adjust and correct your Z offset until you get the nice and even first layer. And that's pretty much it. Easy and simple. Once you get leveling procedure once, you don't need to level it again for a very long time. But you do need to set up the new Z offset if you change nozzle for example. By the way, I think I know why Anycubic called this Delta a predator. Take a listen to this. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was some alien noise for sure. If anyone wonder, noise level on the standby is around 47 decibel and when it's printing it picks around 60 decibel in that high pitch sound. So it's not exactly a 3D printer that you want to keep in a bedroom. Luckily there is an easy solution for this and this is it. These are called stepping motor damper and they are designed to absorb vibration and the noise from the stepping motors. Take a listen. Noise level with the stepper dampers peaks around 53 decibel and now you mostly hear only the static noise from the cooling fans which is way easier to tolerate. Thanks to the ultra based glass surface which actually shrinks when it's cooled down finished part just pop up from the glass surface so you can basically just pick up the finished print no matter how big they are. Alright and now let's talk about the print quality. As usual I have tested this printer with a PLA, PTG, TPU and ABS filament. Let's start first with the PLA and 3D Benji. As you can see I have printed quite a few 3D Benjis in a different layer height. At first I print these two Benjis with the supplied white PLA filament in a 0.1 and 0.2 mm. But then I realized that the white color will be very hard to show on the camera so I print this one in a blue color instead. As you can see this 3D Benji comes out pretty much perfect except one thing and that is the salmon skin. If you look close enough you can see these repetitive patterns on a 3D Benji cabin and the salmon skin on the side. To fix this issue and get perfectly smooth and print surface on this delta I installed the new STL smoothers from Triangular Lab with 8 big diodes on it. These small diode boards are designed to filter and block that spike noise signal from the stepper drivers making the stepper motor to turn nice and smooth. They cost just a few bucks and they are basically just plug and play. Here's a quick guide. First take out the screws from the acrylic sheet on the top of the printer and remove it. Locate the motherboard and unplug X, Y and Z stepper motor wires from the motherboard and connect each wire plug to the TL smoother. Now place the supply heat shrink over every TL smoother and connect them to the motherboard. Make sure that you don't misplace the plugs. Now use hair dryer or air gun to shrink them. Since this board runs quite hot, I use 3M tape and I place them on an aluminum extrusion frame so that they can stay nice and cool. After that I install TL smoothers, I print this 3D Benji again and look at the difference. That repetitive lines are gone and as well the salmon skin. Print surface are nice and smooth. Here's another example. This Benji is printed in a golden ratio layer height, which is 0.1618 mm for this delta. Print quality with the TL smoothers are pretty much perfect and this is the print quality that you can achieve with this simple and cheap upgrade. Honestly, I think that these TL smoothers should be factory pre-installed on every Predator by default. My next test print is another bench test for 3D printer called FDM test. This test is brilliant because it will test your 3D printer in many different areas. Things like bridging, overhands, Z-axis alignment, flow control, dimension accuracy, XY ringing, negative feature resolution and so on. It's pretty much all in one benchmark test for the 3D printer and this delta performs excellent. Right away 4 or 5 pins was directly movable so I rechecked the print accuracy with a digital caliper and I got close to the perfect measurements. Especially I like how well retractions is on this delta. It leaves almost zero stringing, very nice. Next test print is this cool looking bearing that I found on a Thingiverse. I printed with a silver PLA. Print results was again excellent. Bearing looks great and it spins very nice. So if you want to print some project with some high tolerance parts this delta will do a very good job. Next, just for fun, I found this cool looking owl again on a Thingiverse website and I printed using the same silver PLA. I got very nice print results with a lot of details. It looks great and it's a very cool design model. Alright, and now it's time to move to some bigger models. On a Thingiverse I found this cool looking model of the Moon City created by Kaijai. And since this printer used the standard V6 nozzle, you can find all kind of nozzle size and the hardeners for very cheap price. So I changed the standard 0.4mm nozzle to 06 
and I scaled this moon city from 100% to 200%. Printing took approximately 32 hours to complete and the print results was very good. But I made a small mistake and I forget to save correct retraction settings, so I had to use a little bit of heat gun to get rid of some stringing during the printing, which you can see on my time lapse video. Alright, and for my next print using 0.6mm nozzle, I scale up this dragon from Luby 3D from 100% to 300%. And this time I set correct retraction settings. Printing took 12 hours to complete and print results was awesome. Now retraction and print surface on this model looks much smoother and better as it should be. And I like it a lot. This is very cool looking model. It requires no supports and it's very easy to print. Here's the size comparison between 100% scale and 300% scale. It's quite a difference in size. Crazy. Alright, and now it's time to test some PTG. I found this spiral tower, again from the design name Kaijai. I scale it up from 100% to 300% and I start to print. I use bezel grey PTG from a printer pro. Printing took 28 hours to complete and the result was great. Here you see the model from the close by. All details came out very nice and I'm very happy with the print results. Once again, here's a comparison between 100% scale and 350% scale. So if you're looking forward to print some huge objects, I definitely recommend changing the nozzle to bigger one, at least 0.6mm. You will save a lot of print time and as well you can use much higher layer height and prints will be stronger and stiffer. For example, this 40x40 Halo Cube without top printed with 0.6mm nozzle, it's so strong and it's pretty much impossible to break with hands. Alright, and now it's time to test some flex filament. I changed nozzle back to the standard one which was 0.4mm that comes with a printer and I print few models in a red hard flex filament from a printer pro. This filament has a short hardness of 98A and it can be stretched 4.5 times before it snaps. So it's flexible but in the same time parts remain dimension stability. This filament is also insensitive to UV light, grease and oil, which is very cool. It prints very easy and fast and the print quality is great. Here are the few models that are printed with this filament. First is this vase, which is printed in a vase mode, in only one pass on the wall and it's very flexible. Next I print these anti-vibration parts from a Xiaomi electric scooter. Print quality again is excellent and fits very nice. Then I print these cable holders, which turns great and they are very useful. Lastly, I print these flexi racks, which turn out great and it's a still flexible and strong in the same time, which is very cool. And I gotta say that I like this hard flex filament from a printer pro a lot and I will leave links in a video description for you guys to check it out. For those who like to print ABS, I got some good news. Heat bed on this delta can reach 110 degrees Celsius and here are the heat bed warming up test results with the time intervals. For even a faster heat bed warming up time, you could add heat bed insulation underneath which will increase your efficiency, lower the heat loss and save your electricity bill as well. Also I want to point that you don't need any extra adhesion even for ABS, ultra bags work very nice, so no need for any kind of glue or spray. And here is my quick ABS test prints. This is the quadcopter arm and the top frame part designed by Touch 2C and the quality of these ABS prints are very nice. There is no warping or layer separation, parts are nice, straight and strong. For those who want to print some bigger ABS prints, you will need some kind of enclosure. Since this delta has a simple frame design and it has this extra channel on the each side of aluminum extrusion, you could use some side panels and close all three sides. That will make a very nice enclosure. And now the final words. Printing on this delta for the past few weeks was a real pleasure. I did not have any issues with this machine and it gives constant high print quality with a minimal effort. Some upgrades that I can recommend are the TL smoothers and the step motor dampers and if you want to print ABS, I would suggest that you print new air duct nozzle in a PTG. Other than that, for the price of around 500 US dollars, this delta is a very good choice. If you're looking for some printer with a large scale, I definitely recommend this one. Alright guys, I hope that you liked this video. All links you can find are in the video description. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.